Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and the craft slash dining room. Today we've got two colors to paint with. Since I started painting with distress inks, I feel like I have really relaxed over the whole idea of watercolor painting. So much so, see all those markers over there? They're just not getting a lot of attention right now because I am having more fun painting with distress inks than I am with coloring. Hopefully today you'll be inspired to take a very simple approach to watercolor painting. If you've got distress inks or any dye inks laying around, grab a couple, pick a simple image, and let's get to it. My simple painting card project featuring an adorable little bunny coming up next. Here's the card project I'll be creating today. And my biggest tip for anyone who's just starting out with painting, pick a simple image. I fell in love with this little rabbit from the Wish You Were hair set, and that's what we're doing today. All right, let's take a look at the products we'll be using. So here's the little set, and what's cool about a set like this, it comes with multiple greetings, right? You've got that single image, some little hearts, and a few different greetings so you can use this for different purposes, right? And a single die, right? One die, gonna cut out that bunny. And the two colors I'm painting with today are tea dye and kitsch flamingo. I'm gonna stamp with the Versifying Claire in the Nocturne. This is new to me and I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm in love with it. I pulled a couple brushes here, but I'm gonna end up using the smallest one, which is the number two. That just gives me a bit more control. The speckled egg will be part of my ink blending. I've also got blending brushes. Gonna use some of the new domed foams on my old little mini blending tool handles. And for my paper today, I'm gonna to be stamping and painting on the Tim Holtz Distress watercolor cardstock. Love it, it's so bright white. It's a great beginner cardstock for watercolor. Let's start out with stamping. So taking my little guy off here, my little hair, and popping it down on one side because I'm gonna stamp two. Always stamp a backup. Is that is that from Top Gun? Like always have a goose or I I, I don't know. I, I don't really know that movie, but I do know to do this. When you've got a brand new stamp, just rub over the stamp itself just to kind of remove the residue that can be on there from manufacturing. Stamps get conditioned over time, but I gotta tell you, this Versifying Claire, now this is a new ink to me. I have had this pad only for a short time and check this out. Okay, I'm gonna stamp this down. I'm going to use my little stamp tool. This is called a Debbie, and I will have this link below. I've had a lot of people ask about this. This just helps with adding pressure to the misty door, and it doesn't hurt my wrists. But look at that one pass color. It, it's perfect. You know, the beauty of the misty is, if you don't get a great impression, right, you can stamp again. But this Nocturne Versi Versifying Claire, whoo, it's so dark. And the pad is very juicy, but also this, this is a watercolor friendly ink. And I needed one that was not going to, you know, run when the water hits it. But I've always got a backup. Number one, if I mess up, I've got a backup. And number two, I've got a second bunny for a second card. So I'm gonna take my two colors here. This is the tea dye and the kitsch flamingo. Squish them down here, smoosh them onto my little art impressions palette. And we're gonna start painting. Now the tea dye is a great color. I'm actually gonna pop up a card in the upper right for another video I did. When I find something that works, for example, for a rabbit, I tend to not reinvent the wheel. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you're trying a technique. If you've done it once and it works, you know what? Do it again. Nobody's gonna be like, oh, Kathy, you, uh, you know, you used this once on another rabbit. No, it's perfect because, you know, the whole tea stained rabbit thing, well, that's what I was thinking. So one color for the body, right? This tea dye distress ink. And all I'm doing here is laying down a little bit of color. My idea was to have a little bit of shading over here on the left. So I don't know a lot about light and shadow. I suppose I am getting better at at least creating shading on things, but I just figured, all right, the light, the sun, if you will, the giant orb that warms our planet, that's gonna be off to the right-hand side, and so there'll be a little bit of shadowing over on the left, and that's really it. So I just kept watering down the tea dye color, bringing it over, and filling in the bunny's body. It's this simple. 
Now I know if I had done this with Copic coloring implements, no, not to impugn the Copics, I'm just not that comfortable coloring in a large bunny space either with Copics. I don't know why. I think painting has freed me up a little because I feel like this is a very forgiving medium. Because if your painting looks a little wonky, well, guess what? It's watercolor painting, right? So it can look wonky. You can see brush strokes in there. It's kind of adding to the overall charm of the piece. At least that's a story I'm going with, right? All right, just blending out a little more, watering it up, and moving it. Now, do distress inks move the same way like a really high-end watercolor do on paper? I, I don't really know. I mean, I, I do have some high-end watercolors and I have used them. I've used them from time to time. But since I figured out the distress ink connection to adding a little water and painting, I've kind of just stayed in this lane and I'm really happy here. Of course, you can use any dye inks, right? Any water-based ink will work for this. I do find the distress colors tend to move a bit nicer and you can use the oxides too to do this. You're just going to get a slightly different look and feel because the oxides, yeah, they're a little chalkier. Now we're moving on to the Kitsch Flamingo. Ears and the heart. Now here's the thing about Kitsch Flamingo. This is a new color and it seems like it's really bright and bold and it is, but you can also really soften it by you know, adding that water and keeping that nice and liquidy, right? And then come in with a little less water to darken up the side. That's it. So here's two colors, right? You don't have to be super fancy to have an effect that is really pretty and that I personally think my recipient will be like, Kathy, you painted this yourself? Adding a little cheek here. Now on the left, not gonna lie, I should have waited. I did the nose too, but as I watched that dry on the left, I realized that where I had shaded so much, I hadn't let it dry, so it just started to look smushy. We're gonna come back to that. I'm adding a very watered amount to his tail and his belly, because I, I suppose they should be white. But once this was completely dry, and I did wait about five minutes, I came back in to redraw that cheek circle, and I think it looks better. It just looked a little more like a rash than a charming rosy cheek. All right, let's prep a card base here. It'll be a US A2, so four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall. Give that a good press down. This is basically going to be a one layer card, okay? I'm not, I'm not popping in a whole bunch of layers, but what I'm going to do is figure out where the greeting's going to go and where the bunny's going to go. He's drying off to the side. I hadn't die cut it yet, so I thought we'll just we'll kind of visualize this to the best of our ability. I'm going to load up my little foam here with my Kitsch Flamingo and all I'm going to do is ink blend a little color to be behind the bunny. Now I got it a little heavy-handed in the center and I started to look at the blending and I thought I don't know if this is working the way I want. Should I should I abandon ship? Because sometimes, believe me, if you've watched me create live you know that sometimes you gotta you gotta make some decisions on the fly but I thought no because in the center, you're not going to see that center. So if your ink blending skills aren't really on point or aren't where you really want them to be, it's fine. The idea is just, you know, create that glow to the best of your ability. Grab the speckled egg because actually someone on one of my commenters on YouTube said, Kathy, when you overlap Kitsch Flamingo and speckled egg, magic happens. And it is true. You get this purple tone. So I thought, I wonder if I can get that purple tone in the soft, blended area. And yeah, I kind of did. I mean, <laughs> you'll, you'll have to decide at the end, but I just kept working it, right? Don't give up. Don't panic. It's just paper. All we're doing is creating a glow of color to frame my simply painted image. And that's it. I just kept blending and placed that down and thought, I think we're good. A little bit more. You just blend until it's right. I wish there was an actual formula, right? But that, that's the great advice of the century. Just keep going till it's right. I took the coordinating die once my bunny was in full dry mode and I'm running it through my Platinum 6 machine. Now I have two die cut machines. I have an electric one, a Gemini Junior, and I have this one. 
I use them both depending on how difficult or easy the job is. And I just wanted to show you this really quickly on camera. And look at that. Oh, perfection. Still a little rashy on the left, but you know what? It's watercolor, right? It's imperfect. Lining up my greeting onto the card base. And we're gonna ink that up again with the Nocturne. Such a good ink. But keep in mind too, you do have to kind of let it, you know, sit for a second. Don't just like run your finger over it right away. You want it to be completely dry. But I'm giving that some nice even pressure. And when I lift it up, I have a beautiful inked greeting. I'm gonna take some foam squares here, just pop them up on the back of the bunny, cut one in half here so that I could have a little dimension. Now these little hearts are super cute, so I took that off, flipped over my bunny just so I could kind of line up where I thought they should go because I realized the foam squares kind of got in the way. It's going to all work out. We're going to ink those up also with the Nocturne, although I think I could have done them in maybe the speckled egg or maybe one in the Kitsch Flamingo and one in the speckled egg. Could have been cute, you know? Well, you live and you learn. I think this is also fine. And now my little bunny just kind of floats above the glowy area. Isn't that sweet? Such a simple paint job. The ink blending was probably harder than the painting, you know what I mean? But, and the ink blending would have been fine in just pink too. I was just trying to break out of my box here. You gotta, you gotta try new things. Sometimes they're gonna work and sometimes they're not, but I don't know. I think this is such a simple card project and I love how this turned out. I mean, that turned out really cute, right? And so, so, so simple. Don't let painting stress you out, right? Grab a couple distress inks and you are good to go. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.